Hi, this video is going to look at balance and stability. This is our second dot point for the critical question, how do biomechanical principles influence movement? Now your syllabus for this dot point asks you to learn about the center of gravity, the line of gravity, and also the base of support. Uh, you'll learn two, asks you to apply principles of balance and stability to enhance performance through participation in practical workshops. Now it's important with balance and stability that you understand that they are different. So balance is a person's ability to control their equilibrium in, rela in relation to gravity only. Okay, so essentially you're looking at only gravity acting on someone, whether that be standing still or moving forward uh, or moving backwards any direction, any movement. Uh, for an example, uh, balance is about holding a handstand. Whereas stability is your body's ability to return to its original position or into a trajectory uh, after being disturbed by an external force uh, causing a disruption to their equilibrium. Okay, so that might be, for example, being uh, knocked in a tackle or uh, a defender trying to push you off a ball uh, or anything like that. Uh, that's where some, something else is making contact with the person. It's their ability to remain upright or to stay in a desired position or, where, or uh, on, where the, on track for where they're going. So when we come to the center of the gravity, the center of gravity is the point at which gravity appears to be acting upon an object. Uh, this is for the most part the same as the point around which the mass of an object or person is equally distributed in all directions. Uh, the center of gravity moves according to the athlete's body position. And so you can see here in various images that the body position, uh, so that the center of gravity moves depending on the body position. Uh, for example, uh, the runner here in this image, uh, his center of gravity is low and in front of his body because he is leaning forward and is also crouched down. Having a lower center of gravity makes your body more stable during acceleration. Uh, that is both self-produced or externally produced by an object or opponent and the, hence why the sprinter is crouched down because he's about to accelerate and it makes him more stable. When it comes to the line of gravity, this is the direction that gravity is acting upon the person or object and can be thought of as an imaginary line downward from the center of gravity. Uh, the force is also proportional to the length of the line uh, from, the, from the point of gravity to the ground. If the line of gravity is within the base of support, then the body is more stable and is balanced. Uh, if the line moves outside the base of support, the person must move in order to avoid falling to the ground. Uh, for example, the sprinter's line of gravity in the image is outside the base of support as soon as they lift their hands off the ground, uh, causing them to move forward or causing them to need to move forward, otherwise they'll fall over. Uh, not too far though, as if it's too far, they'll fall over because you can't move fast enough. Uh, and if it's only just outside, then they can move slower with something like a walk. So it's important to get that line in the right spot. A handstand is another example, but here the line uh, of gravity is between the base of support and that makes the handstand stable. Once it moves outside of the base of support, that athlete's going to need to move or fall over or roll or something like that. The closer the line is to the center of the base of support, the more stable the object is. Now the base of support is the area around the outside edge of the sections of your body that are in contact with the ground or surface. Uh, the larger the base of support, the easier it is to be balanced and the more stable you are from external forces. When an athlete is anticipating contact from an external player, they will naturally widen their base of support in the direction of force. Um, or the impeding force. So if I'm expecting someone to hit me from in front, I'll take a step back and a step forward to widen my base of support in the direction the force is coming. That way when they hit me, I can absorb the force more easily through my legs. Widening your base of support also makes you less mobile. In order to increase mobility and improve acceleration, you need to reduce your base of support. Uh, so for example, the sprinter improves his um, acceleration by removing his hands and decreasing his base of support. He's also going to lift one leg up, so he's only got one foot on the ground. Oh.